Hello Pisces viewers, today I'm going to be looking into what your person's thinking, feeling, wanting, what action they might be taking towards you. Let's just see what the cards have to say. Let's see what the story is. So regarding the Pisces that are drawn to this video, what is the story? What is going on regarding your love life? What do we need to know? Is it that one? Pretty good energy. Queen of Pentacles, Five of Cups. Ooh. Thank you, Frig, for holding the cards. Seven of Swords, Ten of Cups, Two of Wands, Queen of Cups, The Fool. See, last reading I did, I was getting that you were moving on from somebody who had ghosted you. You know, you made the right decision letting this person go. I still feel this person's energy, and I'm going to look into it and see um, if there's somebody new coming in as well. But let me just clarify these cards really quick first. So I feel like with this person, you kind of lost your, your independence, your money. Uh, just, you know, look at the Queen of Pentacles. She's like, it's confidence, it's independence, it's strength, it's... Um, stability it's uh, you know finances and it's like that kind of that ship kind of sailed away from you with this person you know you kind of lost yourself with this person you know it could just be not necessarily that they were abusive I mean they could have been but it, it is also just the energy of like you just fell really hard for them you know and and so it's like you kind of let your guard down with this person and you you just sort of lost yourself with this person and they ended up not being trustworthy we see with the seven of swords here it's like confrontation with this person maybe dishonesty cheating um and escape you know i still get someone that's emotionally unavailable this person just kind of ran away but there could have also been some conflict or miscommunication here as well I think you've been trying to let them go more and more though. I feel like you have. I just kind of feel like there's like an energy pull here. Like maybe when they pull away or maybe when you pull away or you're just kind of done with them ghosting you and them not knowing what they want and then being emotionally unavailable, you know, you're just kind of over that energy. And so it's like when you start pulling away, they feel you pulling away and they try to pull you back in, but then they still don't really fully commit. They just want to have their cake and eat it too. With the Ten of Cups here, you know, it's like, that's success, that's that's family, that's abundance, that's, you know, reaching, com reaching a completion with love, but in a good way. And it's like with the Two of Wands here, it's like you're trying to make that decision. Like, could you have this happy ending with this person? Like, you, you're so confused on their energy. Like, you don't understand what they want, you know? And you're like, could this happen with this person? Is this person ever, like, are they ever going to stick around for good? Are they just pulling me back in because they are they don't want to lose me? Like... It just, it's a confusing energy, I think. With the Queen of Cups here, it's like you're kind of just waiting, like you're being vulnerable and open with them to some extent. I feel like just a lot of conflicting back and forth energy, like this part of you wants to move on, but then part of you is like, maybe I should wait this out, I don't know. Like, are they ever, maybe if they do some healing work, maybe they'll be more open to committing. Maybe if they figure their life out, maybe if they do this and this and this, maybe they'll finally be open to us being together. Like, it's just like somebody who's, it's just like a very unstable, confusing energy. Um, with the fool here, I almost feel like it has two meanings. It's like, you want this new beginning, but then it's like, are you being the fool? Are you being, because I'm like really drawn to the word fool, and I'm usually not. Usually I just see this as a new beginning, but in this particular read, I'm like, okay, is this foolish? Like, are you waiting in vain? Or is this pain for nothing? Like, should you really be waiting for them at all? Um, and I think you're confused yourself. I think you're, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like this is somebody that you let go. But since since you're trying to pull away, they're trying to pull you back in either energetically, telepathically, or in the physical world. Because it's like they want you back. They want to have their cake and eat it too. But don't let yourself be a fool. You know what I mean? Don't let yourself, don't let them have their cake and eat it too. If they pull you back, then they need to give you a commitment. They need to give you a new start otherwise they don't need to bother pulling you back in you know it's like why are they pulling you back if they're not going to do anything um can you clarify this energy some more please for my viewers what do we need to know mm. 
Mm, three of Wands, Nine of Cups, Queen of Swords. It almost feels like this could be a third party with the Three of Wands here. Like somebody choosing between you and another person. Somebody trying to figure things out and figure out if they want to be with you or somebody else. It almost seems like this person only wants you when they can't have you though. Because you see like this Nine of Cups, it's like... She has to look at this person like they're a frog. You know what I mean? She's got to be like seductive and glamorous and kind of look away from this person and just treat them like they're a frog. And that's what gets their attention is them looking, you know, now this person is looking at you. Now this person is finally wanting to shape up because they don't have you because you're looking away. You're looking forward to something else. You're trying to cut them out. You're trying to focus on yourself. You're trying to figure out if you should wait for them or not. But I think you're leaning towards thinking it's not really worth it anymore because you've been through enough pain and they're just not appreciating you, not valuing you, and you're just tired of it. Um, but I kind of feel like this is just somebody who like, when it's, it's, it's complicated because they're keeping you trapped in a way because it's like when you pull away, they feel you pull away and they try to pull you back in. You know, it's like if you have that telepathic bond with someone, especially and with most relationships, actually, you ever notice like if you and your ex break up when you're like pining over them and you're missing them and hurting, they're just nowhere to be found. And then you move on. And a couple months later, like after you move on, they suddenly hit you up and miss you more than anything. It's, it's the energy. It's They feel that you pulled away. They feel that absence of your energy. And so they try to pull you back in. It's a lot, you know, going on telepathically, astrally. And it's kind of one of those chaser, chasey situations with this person. It's like they when you're when you're not giving them everything, when you're not in the Queen of Cups energy, that's when they want you. That's when they want to chase you. That's when, you know, it's like you're looking forward. You're trying to you're trying to leave this in the past and now they're suddenly waking up and realizing what they had with you and what they lost. They're like, oh shit, like I'm really going to lose this person. What do I do? Um, and so some of them might be like just realizing that they took you for granted and realizing that they messed up. But if this person comes back around, you really need to stay in your queen of swords energy. You need to be strong and confident and assertive. You need to not put up with their shit again. You need to not let them reel you back in because I think that they know I think they took you for granted in the past I think they saw you as a fool for them in, a, in the past almost I think they saw you as this queen of cups this like little fragile flower I mean the queen of cups isn't a fragile flower but it's almost like that kind of energy where it's like I'm like oh yeah I can do whatever I want and this person is still gonna love me you know they just they they did not appreciate you um and so you don't, when this person comes back around, don't get in the Queen of Cups energy, get in the Queen of Swords energy if they come back, you know, being assertive, being confident, being strong, setting really strong boundaries with them. Like, okay, you want to talk? All right, here are my rules. Here are my boundaries. You know, we're not going to, I'm not going to deal with you being in a third party situation. So if you even want to talk to me, you better end that with the other girl or other guy. Um, I'm not going to deal with being ghosted. I'm not going to deal with being ignored all day. Like I'm... You don't even have to say a lot of that. You can just, you can show them through your actions and behavior that you're not going to take it again. You know, if they come back around and they're ghosting you, just ignore them. Just be like, okay, you can play that game. You know, give them a taste of their own medicine. Match their energy. Match their energy. Match their energy. Remember that phrase. Match their energy. It goes for lovers and people. Match their energy. Um, it's really important to match people's energy. I think, personally, for me at least. Um... But yeah, you know, be in this Queen of Swords energy, be confident, be strong, be assertive, set boundaries, do not let them cross those boundaries. I feel like this person knows how to manipulate you. They know that you're romantic and they know just the right things to say and do. They know how to, this could be somebody who's almost like abusive or somebody who's just emotionally unavailable. You know, it's someone who's like, like in the past, I just get this sense of them like they know what to say they know how to reel you back in they know your triggers they know your fears they know how to talk to you they know what to say they know it's like somebody it's almost like the energy of somebody like hurting you and then like crying and apologizing and begging for you back it's like they play on your empathy they play on your romantic side they exploit your vulnerabilities um, and so you really can't be vulnerable with this person. You got to stay in your power if they come back. 
And, you know, as far as, like, whether you want this, again, that's your choice. I personally wouldn't. I don't like this person's energy. I don't think I would give this a second chance. But, you know, you know your history better than I do, so it's up to you. But you, you need to realize that you can have more. You can break this pattern. If you have this pattern with abusive or emotionally unavailable people, you can break this pattern. You can work on yourself. You can attract better people. You can step out of your comfort zone and meet people that are unfamiliar and different than what you're used to. You know, you can have better. You definitely deserve better and you can have better than this. Um, you can have somebody who actually appreciates you and loves you and wants a stable, healthy relationship with you. That is your choice. You have that option. For some of you, it will take work. So, you know, for some of you, it's going to take work to break those patterns and you're going to have to stay on top of yourself and you're going to really have to date people that you wouldn't normally date. You're going to have to be aware of body language. You're going to have to you know, if you're attracted to a certain type of person, it's like it's body language, it's subconscious. So you have to kind of stay on top of yourself and like realize when you're repeating that pattern, realize it, like get in, get in touch with your intuition and realize like that familiar energy and cut that off quick. Listen to the red flags, you know. So many people say like they end up in abusive, toxic relationships and they're like, oh my God, why did that happen? Why didn't my guides warn me? They did warn you. They pretty much always warn you. Usually pretty early on too. There'll be little red flags just this him or her talking down to you or just making little offhand comments or just little jealous comments or even just your own body's intuition like you feeling like you're not able to get off with them easily or like you feel guarded or closed off with them or like your your heart chakra feels tense like your body feels tense around them you don't fully feel safe and vulnerable with them um or however your intuition speaks to you, you know what I mean? Like, there's always, like, little red flags, like, that usually, like, like, little hints, little just, like, just jealousy, insecurity, like, whatever, you'll, you'll, usually, like, there's those signs that you're in, like, an empath narcissist relationship, like, there's usually that energy, some, a lot of people, though, ignore it, you know what I mean? A lot of people just ignore it, they, pretend like the red flags aren't there and it ends up costing them a lot later you know your desire to not be alone now cost you so much in the future it really does and people always say like oh follow your heart like you should follow your heart you should your heart is soul-based connections your heart is true love that's where you follow your heart when you date toxic people you're not following your heart you're following your mind you're following your childhood patterns you're following subconscious patterns you're following you know like childhood and subconscious patterns those are mental those are like who you're attracted to those are body language those are pheromones that kind of stuff it's it's like it's mental so you're following your mind when you date people like that and when you follow your heart that's when you're actually going for soul-based healthy connections so keep that in mind that you haven't you probably think like, oh, I've followed my heart and been betrayed so many times. Like, no, you haven't. You followed your mind so many times <coughs> and been betrayed and apparently had your throat shock or closed, which you need to work on opening. Oh, maybe you do need to work on throat shock or maybe if you have some fears of speaking up, you need to work on your throat shock or <coughs> God. <Ew>. Anyway. <laughs> But yeah, like you haven't, I think you think you followed your heart, but you haven't. You've always been following your mind. You've always been following the fear of being alone and the, the toxic patterns. And it's time to actually follow your heart. Follow your heart to these healthy soul-based connections. Um, and so, yes, I do see someone coming back around, but I do feel like they're toxic. And I do feel like you're going to have to keep them on their toes and you're going to have to play hard to get and play games with them. Or they're going to lose interest and ghost you again or take you for granted again. You know, it's kind of like they just want to pull you back in and so they'll be romantic with you and they'll exploit your vulnerabilities and exploit your empathy and try to drag you back in and maybe tell you they have nobody else but you or they've screwed up and they miss you, blah, blah, blah. But once they have you, they relax and treat you like shit again. And I see that with this person, you know, like, and you would know who this is. Like if this person was like abusive or just really distant and kind of just, ugh, just not great energy with you, then you know who this is already. But yeah, you have to be strong and you have to set boundaries with this person. And again, it's up to you. Do you want this person back or not? I personally wouldn't. I personally would try to step out of my comfort zone, work on myself, heal myself, work on my throat chakras, work on all my throat chakras, work on or work on all my chakras, 
work on getting on my spiritual path, work on intuition, work on getting my queen of pentacles energy back, which could be career, finances, stability, confidence, you know, getting myself back, getting my, getting my, my, you know, queen energy back. I'd be working on myself. I'd be focusing on myself. I'd be focusing on manifesting healthy soul-based relationships and letting go of this toxic pattern and working on cutting, doing some cut and clear spells and rituals maybe as well to let go of this crap. And we do have the lion's gate coming up on Saturday. So that's a really good day to do spell work um, or rituals or intentions, vision board, whatever it is you do, prayers, whatever. And there's a portal open on the 8th. So Saturday the 8th. So keep that in mind. Um, it's great timing for that. Um, but anyway, yeah, so so when this comes back around again, you have to keep this person on their toes. You have to be strong and assertive. And you need to remember, like, don't be a fool. I hate to be so harsh, but don't be a fool. You know what I mean? When this person tries to fool you into thinking it's so different now and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's it's you know it's temporary. You know that they just say what they say to get you back. And once they have you, they're, they're out again. You know what I mean? So, like, be smart. You know, it's your choice to make. Do you want the same old energy or do you want a new start even if the start takes courage and and some inner work you know is it's, it's worth it it's worth it i think but that that's your choice of course let's pull some more cards really quick i'm gonna ask if there's somebody new coming in but i'm kind of feeling like since this i've gotten a couple readings like this in the past and usually when this energy comes up your guides usually don't want to give you too much info on anyone new coming in because they want you to actually like work on yourself and make sure that you don't fall victim to toxic people anymore and then that's kind of when they bring love in but let's see if we can get anything on new people coming in what is is there new love coming in is there anything we need to know about new love coming in anything about new love the fledgling reminder success summon okay I think it's just kind of confirming what we just said. Like the fledgling is about new starts. Ooh, hello. <laughs> the fledgling is about new starts. And like she's looking towards the reminder card, you know, reminder here. Don't forget, you know, don't forget to, to put yourself first. Don't forget to set strong boundaries and stick to those boundaries no matter what. Don't forget to notice the green flags and the red flags. Don't forget to be honest with yourself about the red flags and not allow the red flags to um slide you know don't forget to just just putting yourself first just being aware of the patterns of the body language of cutting that energy out and pushing yourself forward you know um i mean pushing yourself out of that energy out of your comfort zone and just doing what you need to do to break those patterns and attract soul-based relationships um just a reminder be true to who you are don't forget don't forget who you are again for somebody you see the don't forget here it's like this person like killed you mentally emotionally you know don't don't lose yourself into in someone again they're not it's not worth it don't forget who you are again don't don't get back in that energy you know and if you can do that if you can work on yourself and get in that energy you, you do have success you know you will be summoning when you're ready, when you've healed, you will be summoning this, this deep romantic connection, finally having the kind of love that you want. But you have to remember, and I hate telling people that they're not a vibrational match for the love that they want because it's bullshit because it's like we all deserve love. Even when we're at our lowest, we deserve love. You know what I mean? I mean, even when we're at like, if you're drinking or you're smoking or you're doing this all the time, like you're, you've got these bad addictions or you're depressed, whatever, like we all deserve love, you know, like we're human, we're vulnerable, we're meant to be vulnerable, we all deserve love. And so I hate saying you're not a vibrational match for like a healthy partner right now, but it's, it's I mean, it's kind of true though. It's kind of like you're not, if you're, if your guides were to bring you like you're like a soulmate or twin flame I don't think if they were actually a good person I don't think you'd be attracted to them that's the problem is you have this pattern that has to be broken if they brought somebody that could actually have a healthy stable long-term relationship with you in you would probably put them in the friend zone because you have that subconscious pattern you know you you would probably you just wouldn't be used to that energy. You wouldn't be used to being treated well like that. You would question it. You would sabotage it. You would probably just see them as a friend, you know? Um, and so it's like you're kind of attracting the love that you think you deserve on a subconscious deep level. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand about the law of attraction is that your subconscious mind comes into play. 
So if you've had a great life and your life has just been roses and daisies and butterflies and rainbows and everything's been great and you try to manifest love, it's probably going to happen like that. It's probably going to be so easy because you don't have these subconscious blockages and anxieties and fears and blocks. You know what I mean? Like it's it's going to be easy to manifest love because you're there's nothing blocking it deep down. You know what I mean? Um, whereas if you have these like these traumas and these these bad experiences with people and these these you know childhood patterns and just these subconscious patterns repeating then just consciously saying, hey, I want love, I deserve love, draw love to me, isn't going to cut it because you still have these blocks that are that are stopping that from coming in. Or it's like you might manifest it for yourself, but when the person comes in, again, you're going to friend zone them. You're not going to be attracted to them. You're going to, they're not going to be familiar to you. They're not going to be, their energy is not going to be familiar to you. You're not going to be used to being treated well like that. You're not going to know what to do with them. You know, you're going to, with it's like you're gonna be like this person's too nice this person's a pushover you're gonna you know what I mean it's like healthy stable relationships are not familiar to you um and so you really and it's hard it really is I wish I could give you guys a better reading it's it's not easy doing that kind of deep inner work it's messy it's it's shadow work you got to do shadow work you know it's it's a process definitely I would look into uncrossing work and also cut and clear spells. Look in, look that up. Uncrossing hoodoo and cut and clear spells. You can do the spell work on your own. And again, you don't have to do spell work. It's up to you if you want to or not. But don't and don't let any anyone trick you into thinking that you have to pay them hundreds of dollars to do the spell work for you. Like you don't. You can do the spell work at home. You can get an uncrossing bath. You can get an uncrossing candle. Uncrossing is a hoodoo tradition, so it's basically just like it's removing stagnant and negative um energy basically that you don't need anymore it's removing blocks um cut and clear work is, is cutting the energetic connection so we have red threads astrally that connect us to people from our past and cut and clear work would be cutting the threads between them and letting them go and then shielding and protecting your energy you want to do protection work too to stop that connection from coming back and you also when you do cut and clear work you got to make sure you don't text them don't let you know don't talk to them Otherwise, the connection comes back. So you have to do the cut and clear work and actually really stick to it and protect yourself from the connection. Protect yourself, guard yourself, bubble yourself. And it's really time for you to purge. And again, it's your choice, but I, I would go for the unfamiliar. I would push yourself out of your comfort zone. I would do the healing work. I would do the inner work. And and again, it's not that you're not worthy of love. Like you are worthy as, of love just as you are, even if you're insecure. Like I've been insecure plenty of times in the past. Like I've been extremely insecure. I've been an alcoholic. I've been every, you know, everything you can imagine. I've been it, <laughs> you know. Um, and so there's no judgment. It's not that you're not worthy of love. It's just that you're not attracted to, you're not attracted to, I, I don't feel like you're attracted to people that will actually like treat you well is what I'm getting. I just get the sense you you sabotage it and you find things that are wrong with them. So it's like your guides do want to bring you true love, but if they were to bring you a soulmate right now, again, you would friend zone them and that would be that. And you guys would go your separate ways, you know. Um, have you ever noticed? So our minds are very strong. I don't know if you've ever noticed how you ever see like a happy stable couple and you just look at the guy or the girl and you're like "Ooh, that person is not physically attractive at all that they have seemed like they have a great heart but god i would never be physically attracted to that person you know but you notice like the person that's with them is attracted to them they don't physically they physically see something different than what you see in that person because they have a pattern with emotionally available people they have a pattern with with good people with loving people and so they actually physically look different to them than they do to you if that makes sense you know it's like they're actually physically attracted to this good person whereas you'll look at the good person and you'll see somebody who's not physically attractive because that's your mind taking over and playing tricks on you you know your subconscious patterns they, they play a huge role in your your physical mental perception um so just keep that in mind but you know, you again, I do see it. It's going to be some work if you decide to, to do it, but you can be that girl that's attracted to, to good men or that guy that's attracted to good women. You can change those patterns. You can start being attracted to much better quality people. You know, you can summon true love, but you've got to be willing to, to stay on top of it, to remind yourself 
to, to listen to the red flags, cut out anybody who's not treating you like a queen or a king, cut out the, I mean, cutting out, just cutting out the people that are, that there's red flags with cutting out the people that are not right for you, cutting out the people that use you or physically or mentally abuse you or talk down to you, not just going along with their excuses. Like you'll know, you know, it doesn't feel right to you, but abusers will try to manipulate you into thinking it's you, into thinking you know, you're being dramatic or you're being too emotional. No, you're not. That's your intuition trying to tell you something's not right and you need to listen to it again. Finally, you need to listen to your intuition, develop it, listen to it. Listening to your intuition will help you a lot because you'll start recognizing the patterns with abusive people. You'll start seeing them and you're like, wait, no, something feels off. My body feels off. My body feels tense. I don't feel safe. My heart chakra is not open as it should be with the right person. Um, which, I mean, a little bit anxiety is not good, but, like, when you're just, like, closed off, like, you feel tense, like, really tense, it's probably not a great sign, you know? You'll, you'll, but your body's going to talk to you in different ways. Everyone's intuition is a little bit different, so just tune into your intuition, develop it, and see what your gifts, your intuitive gifts are, and listen to them. Um, and then you have that success if you're willing to do this work, the shadow work, the purging, the uncrossing, the healing, the cut and clear work, the, you know... Stepping out of your comfort zone, being assertive, um, standing up for yourself, staying true to yourself above all else. It's time for you to put yourself first, definitely. Put yourself first. And, you know, when you start doing those things, when you start really genuinely loving yourself and genuinely just not putting up with shit from other people, you're, you're going to start attracting better quality people. You're going to start being attracted to better quality people. You know, you need to choose these like intuitive soul-based relationships over these ego, these, you know, the patterns, you know, you really got to be honest with yourself about the patterns and you got to work on fixing them. Some, it requires canceling, you know, it could require canceling. You know, surrender comparison with other people. Keep your eye trained on yourself. Focus on your own strength, attractiveness, and power. So this makes sense with the insecurity. It's like, stop comparing yourself to others. Focus on your developing your own intuition. Focus on your own beauty, your own strengths. Focus on developing your hobbies. Hobbies will help you a lot because when this asshole texts you, you're going to be painting or singing or horseback riding or bungee jumping or traveling or doing whatever it is that you love doing and it's going to be easier to not text them back, you know? Surrender comparison with other people. Just focus on yourself. Focus on developing your intuition. Focus on your own power and strength. Focus on your own, um, just the good things about yourself, you know? Surrender denial. So again, you need to accept people and situations exactly as they are without denying the difficulties. Then you can see things clearly and make the best decisions. So stop ignoring the red flags. <laughs> Take the blindfold off and work on yourself. It's going to be messy. It's going to be a process, but it's going to be worth it. Surrender your belief in scarcity. The universe is asking you to open to infinite nature of abundance. In this way, you can remove blocks in your life and succeed beyond your wildest dreams. So stop telling yourself this story that there's no good people out there. There's a ton of good people out there. You're just not attracted to them. And so you've got to work on that to be attracted to them. I know that's, I know that's not I know it's a rough reading. I know it's rough energy, but you're not alone through this process. You know, your guides are with you. You have resources. Um, you might want to look into counseling. Uh, you just, you you can have the life that you want. You can have the love that you want, but you gotta, you, you gotta take, you just, you have to take those bold risks. You know what I mean? You gotta step out of your comfort zone and, and be willing to step into this new life and be willing to do the inner work. So thank you guys for watching. If this resonates, please subscribe.